Okay, so October 20-something. Anyway, I just had my tonsils out 10 days ago, and there is no way that I'm going to be able to talk for... um, for an hour so what I've done this week is I've put together two clips from a couple of my favorite shows uh if you like them you want to hear more you can uh check out my youtube channel or on spotify or whatever at red eye city uh impression extension and you can see the episodes there uh this is brought to you by Trent Radio 92.7 CFFFM Peterborough. So here we go. This is me, Brennan, and Jordan talking about um, just a bunch of stuff for about 20 minutes. Then I'm going to be playing some other stuff and I'll be back shortly. Thank you so much for tuning in and hopefully next week I will be able to talk more efficiently. All right. Enjoy. Thank you. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Answer. Right? There, there that's no what I mean. Better. Becoming a better person, would that maybe you get somebody who's very anti certain something and they might feel oh if i'm going to become a better person i need to repress these other people Well, like a nazi would think the more racist they are the better person they are exactly that's Mm -hmm. my point right so where is there is is there a good and bad general good and bad if you're hurting others i think if you're hurting people that don't deserve to be hurt and i guess deserving to be hurt would be another topic but innocent people who don't deserve to be hurt if you're hurting them what you're doing is bad almost no matter what. So almost. if we want to talk about gay marriage, somebody who's against gay marriage and not allowing that to happen in their legislature, that's a bad thing, even though their religion says that it's a good thing. Tough. You know, it's this tough. is a conflict, it's, right? Yeah. Two sides. What Who if, what solves if the, these conflicts? What I like to think is, what if, the, was, what if the religion is right? What if gay marriage is a sin? I don't believe it. I'm absolutely supportive no, in no, every no, way. Right. You're, but you're but able, I like yeah, to think about their idea. shoes. Yeah, yeah, like, idea. Well, if shit. Can, <laughs> if you can't step in someone's shoes to see where they're coming don't from, then you, well, yeah, you can't exactly. even have an opinion. Yeah, because then your right. opinion is so self-centered and so self-directed without the ability. Now, maybe you have in the past, and that's different. Now, you've formed an opinion. Yeah. But if it's something like gay marriage and you're not able to at least try and see where they're coming from and what reasons, i.e., yeah, were they going to church seven, or two, three days a week and youth groups and were they preaching no no uh, gay marriage, no gay marriage? Well, that's all you know. Yeah. Then, okay, so now I understand where that's coming from. Not that it's right, but at least I have an understanding. So I like how you put uh, validity in trying to see – if there is two sides of it, because it's super yeah. important. It's a, really hard, especially for me. I've always been a my way of the highway type of person. So now, becoming older, it's like having to understand other people's opinions. And I, I don't want to be like an ignorant person, but it's tough when you naturally... Like, I've just always naturally thought I was right about everything since I can remember. And I think a lot of people struggle with that, but they don't try to fix it. They just think. Well, it's, it's right. It's hard to question your own doubt, right? If you have like, that, well, I don't know if we want to jump into the learning and unlearning right now. Not yet. Oh, because it would perfectly <laughs> tie in right now. My goodness. Okay, go for it. I'll, I'll one line it. Yeah, you know, it is so difficult when you know if you learn all these things to find our truth through patterns, through logic, etc. You know, the natural form of knowledge building. How is it when there's another safe form of knowledge, or what I like to look at? If everything, realistically, everything's math. There's always different solutions to the same problem, just which ones are quicker, which ones are longer, which ones take yeah. more work. Which ones are more stable. It mo- yeah, yeah. Right. We, we want to talk chemistry and all right. that stuff. Exactly. So, oh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, I hate that. <laughs> my goodness. Um, so, yeah, like we're talking about the balance. Oh, exactly. So once you've you know learned all this and come to realize this and then somebody else offers that better solution – it's not easy to just unlearn everything oh. that you knew and basically rebuild that same knowledge system and amalgamate, you know, other knowledge forms that you're learning yeah. into your own. Years of work, essentially. Like, it, right. Yeah. Even like a recipe. Yeah. If you have always For made that turkey years, dinner, the yep. same thing because your parents mm-hmm. made it and, and whatever. Somebody else. And someone Put says, the hey, have you ever tried it. this? And you're like, uh, why would I ever do that? And I then it's delicious. Yeah, yeah, how do you let go tough. of the yeah. one tradition? Because then it's like, what have I been doing this whole time? Better. Wasting my time for nothing. Don't ask my grandma that question. Right. But it's true, though. Like, <laughs> imagine so you, oh you know, she had tough. that spaghetti so recipe, the spaghetti sauce recipe, and you tweaked it a little bit and made it better. Yep. 
Now you're like, mm, I'm screwing with that, what I learned, but hold on. Why didn't she know that? Yep. If I know that, mm. then maybe what else doesn't she know that I might know? But that might be freeing, right? Yep. Now that something people. like that might free you up to question everything could be better. Trial and error. Yeah. I think some people will see that and they'll say, I think maybe three types of people. One type of person will, let's say, for example, religious beliefs, they'll be a Christian 30 years and then someone, someone will provide a different opinion and they'll say, no, you think I just wasted the last 30 years of my life? I'll die with this opinion. Boom, that's one person. Stubborn. Exactly. The other type of person will immediately always think, they'll immediately say, oh yeah, maybe you're right. That's very rare. And those people are the best. They're very smart, always learning. But the middle ground I think a lot of us are in are we do have that natural opposition reaction. Maybe not. This is just me personally. But are aware of it and are trying to build past it. So we're aware it's a fault and we're trying to better it. No, like not to kind of like ask this directly to you, but it kind of sounds like you put yourself in the middle, but you think like the higher, what, like the, the second one you meant, like the being the higher ground, always assuming blah, blah, blah. That's, you know, it's way better when people are that way. Do not find though that that not only puts people in a position where they can get taken advantage of, but do you think, and back to that, over uh, accumulation of knowledge yeah you know does it does that maybe push you towards it, i mm, yeah i think if you're the type of person where you take ev- like when i was starting the conspiracy i took everything as the truth then you can be manipulated but if you have a firm truth but accept everything in it's like if your sense of what you believe in is so strong that you can legitimately build a story for anything else and not have it affect your own beliefs then that's golden can I talk to you? But I want to ask you a question. You used a word, and you were you used the word sense. If you sense something is wrong, talk to me about what is sense. Uh, sense is I I don't know. I I think it's different for every person. I could oh, never okay. experience well, talk someone about else's sense. Your sense. So where I do you find intuition. your sense? Into I think my intuition is awesome. I've okay. always describe liked the it. intuition. What is intuition? You just feel it. It's just drop everything you've ever learned and exist purely as like energy and what's that energy tell you right now every single thing you've ever learned in your life drop it you are a baby in the womb what do you feel and trust that feeling so give me an example of when you've had some sense slash intuition recently like where could someone who's never felt intuition where might they around find people intuition? the energy you get from people if you look into someone's eyes and you get a bad vibe from them that's because there's a bad, bad vibe people don't make up bad vibes like, so, like, when you meet somebody, and if you've got intuition that this person might take advantage of you, yeah, you might or like if you're a girl, revealing. this person has maybe like a sexually safe. like aggressive, uh, be like demeanor. Well, maybe you're making it up out of paranoia. I'm sure that fear can induce altered perceptions of your senses. I'm afraid, so every sense is going to be through a lens of fear. Right. But yep. if you're naturally at a state where you're kind of calm and collected and you sense something, give it validity. So your your state of being affects your intuition. Yeah. I like to look if at it like afraid, a filter. you're right? So if you're at yeah. night and it's dark and it's a thunderstorm. That's going to bias every that, single exactly. That is going to influence your intuition more. Everything. So someone knocks at the door in that thunderstorm, you're like, yeah, no exactly. chance. Yep. Someone knocks on the door at two in the afternoon. Oh, okay. No problem. Right? Could be the same so person now, for the same reason. Yeah, that yeah. becomes uh, part of your life world and your stereotyping. A knock door during a thunderstorm is scarier than a knock door in the afternoon. Meanwhile, someone could have a flat tire at night or in the daytime. You got to find those balances between, you know, eliminate fear is one, the most powerful emotion is one of many. I think it's more powerful than love, unfortunately. This is when I look at survival of the fittest and back in our linear lifetimes of whatever, is there a, a part of our intuition that is taking care of us for safety, keeping us out of fear. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? Yes. Like, again, you wouldn't want to open your door at four in the morning to somebody as opposed to two in the afternoon. Is that just uh, being smart? I think mm-hmm. it's because, uh, well, there's ca- history, exercise caution. And mm-hmm. you know, I'd honestly, I'd encourage anyone to, you know, on top of try and step away from fear and et cetera and all that. But every, you know, Test your intuition and see what the result is. How see could what, someone exactly. test intuition? Give like is there a, so if my, yeah so okay I've had um, this 
it's just that story from the other night. Uh, I was out at a music festival and um, a gut feeling of me told me I was with uh, I was with some friends going to meet up with some other friends. And a gut feeling told me just you get like, just don't go. You guys shouldn't be there. There's going to be a shit show. We're drinking. We're having a good time. I just, you know, I brush it off. Yep. And I can say I, sometimes I choose to just brush it off and bite the bullet. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Yep. Abs- you know, shit show. Yeah, absolute shit show. And so again, where I'm reflecting, do you look back and go, oh, "I should have listened to my my intuition was right," or my intuition wasn't right, but I'm glad tough. I made a decision to go because I ha- I'm, I'm glad I didn't react to my intuition. Oh no, intuition was completely right because there's very rarely times that intuition fails you. And again, to trust the validity, but that doesn't mean that you just didn't see something else happen that you just avoided, right? Yeah, right. You know, there might have been a car crash just up the street ten minutes. So before. being yeah, able to tough. identify. And make decisions and react to your intuition is the key. Yeah. Uh, one thing I right. do is if you if you're willing and you if you're really like you can be afraid and you can be cautious, but if you really want to risk it, every time your intuition tells you something, do the opposite and see was it right. My intuition is telling me, like he said, not to go. I did go and it was exactly. wrong. Now I have proof. A tick for your intuition. Don't just judge exactly. it by one tick. Oh, you know, so it's like kind of ticks. work. You're exactly. building your intuition. Exactly. You're, mm-hmm. you're, fle- you're, you're exercising your intuition so it becomes stronger and more, more reliable. Point. And to put it bluntly, like, don't be a bitch. What do you mean? <laughs> In an ignorant way of putting hold it. Hold on. Like, do you want to expand on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I say I, I say that comedically. <laughs> I like to be blunt. Yeah, yeah. I know. Whoa. Don't. <laughs> swinging. Like, don't don't be afraid. Uh, like sometimes uh, you're like don't be yeah. a scaredy cat is like the same as what so I like meant. don't be afraid to be vulnerable to your intuition. Yeah, like maybe like maybe one day you're gonna have an intuition that tells you not to go out and you do go out and get hit by a car. That's possible. But what are you gonna do? Not go out every time? Like risk. You have to live. You have to risk it. You have to live life. Now, okay. do, you, do you believe in destined paths or anything along the oh, lines of that? That's interesting. I oh I'm on the fence. I I have. Um, some days I believe it. Some days I don't. Do you want to? T- I'm not sure what you're talking about. You want to tell us what uh, you're talking about? Um, in regards to what you just asked. Destined path. Um, well, so theoretically, we're talking all that you know about just living your life. Blah 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 blah. If you were to get rid of fear, you were essentially saying you know you're going to trust in what happens. Of so course, destined that, life means that it's pre-made for you. Yeah, uh, I thought that's what destiny by, would be. By technicality, yes. I don't think. Everything is inevitable. Ultimately, things happen for a reason. There's no, there's no denying that. But I think more so, like I said, the second that you let go, because if you're scared of every single little thing, that heat of caution is literally going to be the path that you're living. Exactly. And each time you basically, and you could tie it into all the. So different you control experience. your own destiny. Uh, more or less. Yeah. Right. Because if course. you're saying don't be so, be looser and more intuition. Then you're choosing to do that. Therefore, you've chosen that destiny. And they're all paths. There's all different yeah. paths of life that you're going to take. But yeah, ultimately, that's that. And you're going to go through, depending on how you want. Sometimes you'll zig- talk about multiple, you know, the parallels or the multiple. So, how do we control our destiny to make a bigger change in thyself, family, and even to a greater extension, the world? For better, because if it's something that we can manipulate or direct in some sense, shouldn't we all be making the direction to make our destinies better? Yeah. Brent, do you want to start that? Or? Um, yeah, okay. One, a metaphor I like to use is when it comes to, because I do believe your choices affect, like ripple affect your future. Yeah. I think maybe you have a pre, like let's say, right, the day we're going to die is set, but that's already set in fate or whatever but yep. however it happens whatever life we live up until then is what is our choices so i like to look at every time you make it a decision out of emotion take every emotion and imagine it a water drug labeled with that emotion and every time you make an emotion you put a drop of water in that water so every time you make an emotion out of fear you put a drop of water in the water drug labeled fear right and then it raises and raises and becomes heavier and when the water drugs become heavier they have more of a pull on your subconscious so every time you make like a decision an anchor, exactly of. makes sense every emotion you make a decision out of becomes stronger in your mind so if you're always making decisions out of fear you're going to have more fear in your mind and that's going to change like i said it, it then acts as like a yeah, cigarette what's the water filter. look like yeah Exactly. It looks murky. Right, so like an old horror movie, you're getting chased by Freddy Krueger or Jason Voorhees, 
and you're getting more scared and more scared, you're going to be making more decisions out of that fear, which yeah. are probably going to be the wrong decisions. Fear's wrong. Let's split the group up. I'm going to yeah. go yeah. one way. We're going to go the other way. Where if you were working in, okay, strength and strength. trying to bravery. Right, you'd be like, okay, let's get smart about this. Yep. I'm not afraid of whatever. You and so there I now. can make exactly. Let's play better, rational. different decisions yeah. that will create more safety and more comfort. Um, do you, you have know? any do you have any thoughts on this or on like to your own to your own question? I don't know. Like I kind of forget the question to be honest yeah, with you too, right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, we're, yeah, we just went on. Well, honestly, okay, if, you know, the whole predestined thing talking about Oh, you know, destiny. I, then, I I I believe manifest I okay, actually yeah, I could go really deep into this when I think more about manifestation. Okay. You know, like the secret that, you know, if you think it, it will happen. Yep. I think there's a lot. I think you get what you put back, you put out there. Yep. Um, yeah. I, I do believe that. Destiny at one point, I don't know if there's like a destined for me to do something and that I'm on a path to get something done. I do believe that, you know, you kind of make what you have but i also believe that there is definitely an energy yeah. some sort of something that helps with Controlling genuine you. thoughts actions or what you want you i don't think you can fake it i don't think you could put a picture of a million dollars on your mirror and think i want a million dollars i want a million dollars and you'll manifest it mm. i think it's way deeper it's an emotion it's, it's deeper, a feeling yeah. it's part of a soul it's part of something yeah it's deeper than your conscience. all of that believes in it and yeah. that's an energy exactly. that you can't control it's just it is it, this is who you are you don't even debate it more right or less. yeah and, and when you want something or when you strive for something it becomes more attainable because you're open to it being allowed. And then it there in and of itself, you surround yourself with people or things that contribute to that. And it all balloons together, but definitely manifestation and positive thinking. I golf a lot. And I, t I talk to people about golfing and I tell them, I'm like, tell me the shot you're going to hit out loud and then hit and exactly what you're going and what it's going to look like. So for a golfer, I might say, I'm going to hit it over that tree and I'm going to have it hook around, yep. land in front of the green, bounce up to the green, and then roll on the green. Yep. Perfect. Now just stand there and do it. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. Yeah, Don't think exactly. about it. You just thought about it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Don't be like, oh, I, I, I've got to not hit it in that trap. I got to make sure I carry the water. I got to make sure it doesn't go into the trees. You just said sand trap, water, and trees. I guarantee there's you're a good chance one of the three. you're going in one of the yeah, three, yeah. right? Instead of saying, I'm going to rip one up the middle and that's it, right? So I believe there is some po – like like I do that a lot. I practice that a lot. Confidence? is it, Right. Maybe it is mm -hmm. confidence. Maybe it's a foreshadowing. You know, confidence. Can you foreshadow yourself into something by saying it and believing it before actually doing it? I Honestly, I love the way this conversation has gone because the answer to the question has literally been – like said in all different routes we've gone from the top of fear broken down you know break that down go into love you can't over love you can't overdo you can't overthink you start to you know reincorporate all these different senses that we have and once you find that balance between all of them again like you said it just is it is yeah. really that simple and you know we want to talk even something simple and realistic i used to be a mex etc the second that i thought before i'm about to go out of a quarter pipe if i'm gonna bail I'm about to eat it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm about oh, to yeah. eat it. If I don't think about it, you fly. You you know you, you just spin it. and you pull boom. it out, and that's it. And yeah. then right. you never think about it again. Yes, you just do it. Now yeah. here's where it gets complicated. You try that jump, or you try that golf shot, you or whatever it is, it. and and you don't do it. Mm. You do bite it. Do you try it again? Do you feel as confident in your ability to hit that or land that jump? when you've wiped twice or your friend just wiped and how detrimental is that it's kind of like a reverse you're going your nerves, backwards you on, and see maybe something right before that it's something as simple as training you have to go back to the pit you know where you're jumping into the foam pit go back to those you know take a step back unlearn whatever you were just learning because it was it didn't work so this is where we're gonna we are actually getting into where i wanted to go to yep. you say unlearn yeah i say relearn oh Okay, well, you have to relearn once you unlearn. But you're not relearning yeah. the same thing, so you're not relearning. Do you? you? You learn something, then you unlearn, then you learn again. Then so you that unlearn. seems like a waste of time. You just wasted a whole – why not unlearn two steps something? Forward, one and then, step back. Right. I'm like two steps forward, one more forward, 
why not okay. relearn from that point of un- before unlearning? Why not just relearn? Right. I learned okay, you're not referring to the same thing. You just okay. I'm okay. eliminating the unlearning the possibility. And turning that unlearning instead of a two steps or one step backwards. I'm yeah. saying no, no. Let's stop now and relearn from where we are. Why do we need to unlearn something when we can just relearn? Huh. To answer if, that if, question, I uh, that definitely I think there's a certain place and time to relearn and unlearn. But if you don't unlearn, then what you've previously learned will affect your new learning and i hope it would i really could i I really like the way you put that in terms of the individual i think maybe more so like i grew up in a very religious household i went to actually like a private uh it was a like dutch reformed christian school it was very very religious and most people i tell a story and they swear i'm the you know i was i was yeah they wouldn't believe it etc blah 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 those people were so stubborn and so ignorant that i think maybe i got so consumed in them just trying to you know unlearn but yeah if you were to again skip the step re relearn right. I, i'm 100 percent with that i think think about i it. think about like my dad he doesn't have the capacity to unlearn 70 years of growing up yeah it's just impossible he doesn't yeah. have it but he does have the ability to still learn new things because it doesn't affect his old things yeah just so if we're able to say hey stop right here now it's time to relearn your thinking not you know what? You got to unlearn your thinking because it's wrong. Yeah. No, it's not wrong. It got to that point, and it is. It is what it is. That is what you think, and that's where you're at. Now that we're aware of that, maybe it's not the socially the way it's supposed to be. Let's relearn those things that you learned wrong, hmm. right? Because you still. Mm-hmm. For me, and especially in pain and relationships or things that have grown up, I don't want to forget about the fights. I don't want to forget about the They're bad still part times of you, right? because yeah. they if. They, they essentially of who God, I am there. a part of. So I want to be able to learn from those right? and then become better but still aware because I don't want to lose any memories really. Now, if that made me a worse person, mm-hmm. fine. But I might be able to identify with somebody who's in that same situation mm-hmm. now true. easier because I still am holding on to it That's and true. I'm able to help them. The relearn. best way to understand someone's pain is to have gone through it yourself. Yeah, so and it's also shorter can. too. Like to relearn something instead of Dude, unlearn, relearn. Why skip steps? It's like yeah. again, you just like you said, two steps forward, one back. Yeah. What about uh-huh. something two tra- steps forward, horribly traumatic? Pause. One more forward. Yeah. Then do right. it again. And then it, right. And then reset whatever. And then you just mo- let's. We should all be moving forward. I get that you you go like I play stock market too. Yeah. yeah. It's up and down, up and down. And that's my whole thing. That's a little different. That's a technical algorithm system. Yeah. There's no talking. relearning on with luck like that. Right. It is yeah. what it is. The market's going to react to the market. Yeah. Now individuals and emotion and thought and you have a lot are. more control with that obviously and that's where maybe i'm a little naive because i'd like to think that everybody can get better and i've talked about this before someone says something racist i'm not going to jump down their throat and fight them someone says something racist i'm going to try to pull back educate teach so that they won't make that mistake again. Yep. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with somebody saying something wrong and learning from it and not saying it again. I'm not okay with someone saying something wrong and getting beaten up for it. Unless mm-hmm. they continue to... Yeah, like, I was going to say... Right. It's, if yeah. it's something they're not system, learning from, the that's different. System. They need to yeah. learn uh, yeah. the hard way if they're going to be ignorant and continue to do that. But if it is something that they've been taught as a kid and that's ingrained in them, I'm willing to say, okay... Now, as a person, let's move past that. No, no problem. Like I accept you for who you are. Now, again, two years later, they're still making that same mistake. Or yeah, that, then, yeah. yeah, then I have no time for them. I'm giving them the yeah. chance. I have a question. Sure. Um, so, what you're saying with the relearn, I agree with, and I think it saves time, and I think it builds you as a character more. But, like I said, the way that I like to figure things out is by process of elimination. So now I'm thinking of what scenarios. Will unlearning be better than relearning to know like how efficient relearning is? So what do you think about someone who would face like a traumatic scenario, like say they were raped or something, and now they have a certain point of view of, of, of sex? So would it be better to relearn or to completely try and wipe that out and then relearn? That is a tough question because it comes back to the amount of time. And it, it does come to the end of it. There might be a hybrid, right? You know, if it's going to take somebody in their 20s, say early 20s, 15, 20 years to unlearn and relearn, they might have just lost their their Prime ability years, to have yeah. kids. 
and things like that, right? If they're not right, but it's well, it'd be so, taking a risk relearning in that way, which right, could be now, better. Can you relearn right from that moment and give up? I, I don't know. Like that's a situation that I have not. Like hmm. it's it's just it's like tough. a racial situation. I will never be able to put myself in somebody of color's shoes or a different gender than yeah. I well, am because it's impossible. I can be their ally and I can help understand where they're from, but I'll never pretend. So something that's a tough question because I would. That's well, big, what do you think, big, big. about that intuition thing? But now to make it even more complicated, what if it was something you decided to do that you did trial and error? You knew your intuition said it might be wrong, but you still did it anyways. Or versus something that you know was completely out of your hands. You know, it just went wrong. Yeah, like do you hold self responsibility precisely? Well, I think also how often do people reflect on themselves in their day to day? I, you know, people journal. Some people journal, and that's great. I reflect over a lot of things, you know, whether it's 10 minutes in the car after we come out of this interview, I'm going to reflect over this interview and how I perceived it. All right. There was me, Brandon and Jordan. Sorry about the short cut or cut off kind of in the middle of a thought, but uh, in order to try to get this material into this one hour, I kind of had to do that. Um, coming up next is uh, myself talking about some manifestation both of these episodes can be found on uh, online at Red Eye City or on Spotify or whatever, Impression Extension. Also, after this next little clip about uh, manifestation and how I try to do it, I play a song um, written and performed by my daughter uh, called Bernarnium, and it's a song about a gay alien and a human trying to find love. So enjoy both of those, and uh, we'll touch base when all this is over. Thank you again, and uh, hopefully you enjoy it. Thank you. But um, if not, that's okay. So anyway, let's get back to this manifestation. I believe strongly, 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 strongly in manifestation. Now, that does not mean I believe in quick manifestation or greedy manifestation. I believe in true manifestation when it comes when it comes to everything but especially how it works and now just so everybody is clear i am not an expert at anything everything that i talk about is just my what i'm thinking i don't even read hardly which is a negative but um you know a lot of what i talk about is just from experience and is just from my own feelings take them or leave them that's what they are but I make no claim to anything. So back to this manifestation. So I believe that true manifestation can be accomplished. And with that, you are able to foreshadow your future through manifestation to some degree. Now, I think people are better at it or worse at it. I believe that there are energies or something that supports that and helps that. I believe that the more you believe in it and it becomes you, the more powerful you are at it. And I want to kind of talk about how I go about doing it. Um and how it's become just who I am. It's just part of what I do every day, and it's pretty cool. So, and again, I can tie this back to virtually everything um, when it comes to the power of being able to do something, accomplish something, want something, or become something. Now, there are limitations, maybe. I don't know that answer. But if you want to believe it, then maybe there is. Can I become the president of the United States? No, I'm not an American citizen. All right. So on an extreme, there's a limitation. Can I get around that? Uh, I don't think so. So that's not going to happen. Right. So some of these manifestation goals or desires or thoughts still have to be in the spectrum that is somewhat attainable to at least 1%. Which is pretty good because if you've got one percent one percent chance then there's still a chance and that's all you need to work with so for me manifestation started 
um, learning about the, the book and the movie The Secret and how if you think it, it will happen. Okay, easy enough, right? You think, uh, I think it, it happens, so let's just think it and it will happen. Okay. Day one, you think it, it happens, nothing happens. Day 30, same thing. Day 40, same thing. And then you just stop thinking about it, right? Well, who's to say how long manifestation works? Who's to say, think about, think about this. And so that's just the way the secret kind of, I read into the secret. Again, my way is a lot different. We're going to talk about that. But what I want you to visualize, I guess first, and again, I'm all over the place here, is how you can grow or what manifestation really is. So if you think of a bodybuilder, somebody who's working out, think about your brother, think about yourself, think about your dad, your mom, your kid, whoever, and look at that person or look at yourself in the mirror and think about, okay, right now I can do X amount of push-ups and I can do X amount of um, pull-ups and I can lift weights and that's how strong I am. Well, if you manifest that you want to do 100 push-ups and you can only do five right now and 100 sit-ups and you can only do 10 of those right now, do you think you can just go from five to 10? or 10 to 100? I don't think so, right? It doesn't work that way. You've got to go five, and then the next day might be six, and then it's back down to five, and then it's back up to 10, and gradually you build your muscle and your muscle memory and your strength so that at some point you will hit 100, and 100 sit-ups, and 100 push-ups, and 100 pull-ups, whatever that may, whatever the number is. But it's something that you worked on for an extended amount of time, whatever amount of time that took you. And now everybody's different. Some people learn and get stronger faster. Some people, it happens slower. Some people need to practice every day. Some people need to practice once a week, right? So everybody is an individual when it comes to this manifestation and creating your reality. Um, but once you get stronger at it, it all becomes stronger. So when you are manifesting and you're believing in what you want to become or what you want to achieve and that that's what's going to happen or whatever, or how you're going to meet that girl or guy and can you become more this or more that, whatever it is, it needs to be, it needs to be exercised and it needs to be strong and built and developed and created for it to actually work. Uh, hopefully you're following me. I'm kind of not following, but I'm around. I'm kind of in it. So when that happens, the other things that you start to become or start to want to do, it becomes easier for that. So it's like building a base, like a concrete to anything, right? This base of belief and this base of manifestation power or whatever you want to call it, um, now has become part of you. It is now part and is solidified inside of you that you do it without even paying attention to it, right? You're strong now. You can do 100 push-ups and 100 sit-ups. Well, now you know what? When you got to go move boxes for your friend moving, it's a lot easier for you. You can go do it. Or you think, you know what? I just met somebody new and they like hiking. Well, you can probably hike better than you did before you were doing those push-ups and sit-ups, right? Like, kind of, you know what I mean? I kind I know what I mean. So hopefully you guys know what I mean. So <clears throat> once you've built this intuition, uh, not intuition, that's another thing. Once you've built the ability to manifest, it now becomes your beliefs and what those are in other areas and how you want to live your life and how strong that manifestation will happen. So if you're a racist, if you're a jerk, and if you're a negative person, your manifestation power will start to become those things. And you will, again, this is just me saying this shit, so don't fall, like just... This is all my thoughts. 
you don't believe it. That's all I want to say. Or believe it, whatever you want. Anyway, your manifestation will now be rooted and grounded in those thoughts or in that attitude. So now when you manifest things, which everybody does money, a little too direct, maybe if you just say, I want money, maybe let's, you know, get a little creative and figure out how you're going to manifest money. But if that is your thing and you have now the ability to manifest or you think you do and you're a negative person, that manifestation will be rooted and would grow from that belief of who you are. If you're a jerk and you start to want money, I believe the power of manifestation will make that dirtier money, will make that less enjoyable money. Now, possibly you'll get it, but it'll come from more of this negative, more of this anger, more of this jerkiness. And that will be a direction that your power of manifestation will take you. You might find yourself in scarier situations. You might find yourself surrounded with people that are similar to you. Now, if you like that, that's on you. You're ignorant and whatever. But who likes to be an asshole or who likes to be a jerk? If you find that those are the types of people that are now surrounding you, and you go to events or you go do things that is surrounded by similar types of people like that, you got to take a step back and think, whoa, why is this? Why am I surrounded? Or why am I engulfed? Or why am I immersed in these things that are negative? After I've done all this manifestation and all I want is this and this and this, or to be this and this and this. Well, great, but you got to remember where it's coming from. So for me, before I got into manifestation, I took a huge shift in the way I lived, the way I looked at my life, the way that I am, who I am, and what I want to be. And I force-fed that into me, even when I didn't believe it, even when it didn't seem right, even when it felt wrong. For me, I don't see anything wrong with being a good person all the time to everybody. I tell everybody that I meet and I've met a lot of people here and we've had some crazy discussions and awesome ones. And one of the, not the silver linings, but one of the themes that keeps coming up is treat others how you want to be treated. Now we've all heard that all the time, but have we thought about that? Right. And when I have these conversations with, with some people here and then we talk about that, I can see some self-reflection and it's like, huh, that makes sense. And it does make sense. Treat people how you want to be treated. Is it that simple? Mm, on paper, maybe, but there's a lot more to that. So anyway, back to where I was getting back with how I started the manifestation. And it was really a life switch and it was an outlook switch. I got fired from a job about five years ago that I had for a long time. Um, the time was right. It was time to go, whatever. And But it really allowed me to take a step back and think, how do I want to live the rest of my life? And one of the things that was a reoccurring part of that job and my jobs before that was the fact that you're not good enough. And the people that work for you, even if they are good enough, need to think that they're not good enough. Right? Let me say that again. You're not good enough, and the people that work for you are not good enough, and they need, even if they are good enough, they need to think they're not good enough. That's disgusting. And that's what's going on out there. There is so much suppression, not only, it's everywhere. It really is. I don't even know where to start with that. That's another topic. We'll get to that one one day. Let me write that down. Suppression. Impression suppression. <laughs> anyway, so back to where I was going with this. So I took a step back and I thought, whoa, that that has been my core and what I've been working within for 20 years. I've been working within this system 
that has been telling me that I'm not good enough and that the people around me aren't good enough. So what do you think that does when you start trying to think about other things in your life that you want to do, that you want to accomplish? You want to become better. You want to become healthier. You want to become faster, stronger, smarter, more creative, whatever it is, with all those things. If it's coming from a place that you're not good enough, you will never be good enough. And that's horseshit. So I said, enough of that. And I started to shape, well, not just that. So I started to shape my life and the way I'm thinking on the opposite of that. And what started to happen was unbelievable. So, you know, I took some time off and whatever, did some stuff and worked on how I was going to live and what my next steps are and things like that. And all of a sudden, bam, someone comes into my life that lives the way that I would or has a mental state in a, a ment, an attitude towards the world of what I visualized or drew up in my head of how I would want to be. And this person was put in front of me for five days a week, 10 hours a day while we're digging ditches and digging pools and driveways. To me, that was a huge sign after the work I did from getting fired and from trying to figure out what I wanted to do and starting to believe that what I was doing and what I was told to be doing was wrong and pushed against that, all of a sudden this person is put in front of me and like virtually for months, for about three months, and I was able to listen and learn and see how this person lives the, his life and how... Um, the people around him are and who the people are around him and how he achieves goals and targets and how he treats others and all of that stuff. And I was like, okay, this can be done. And was that a sign? Maybe, I I don't know, but um, it was something. So then I started to think about it even more and really um, focus again on all of the positive, all of the time, And we're going to get to that because I've just discovered last night that there is a fault in thinking positive all the time. And that is maybe you're blind to the negative and just because you don't want to see it, another story. Anyway, so I started to really believe that. I started to apply everything into that scope of positive. So some shitty things would happen in my life. Something would happen and I would look at it and it would be a struggle and it would be hard and I'd have to deal with it. And all I would try to do is maybe not all, but well, yeah, all now for sure was try to find the silver lining in whatever situation was happening and to be able to step back, reassess, um, I guess, reconstruct my feelings, my emotion, my thoughts into more of a positive, into a learning, into a, um, like, like just from a scope of there has to be something good here, find it, hold on to it and build from that because I don't want to go into that negative and work from that. Because I was trying to build this foundation within me of positive, of everything has a, is a good. We can work with everything, um, sharing and having experiences and just all of it. So I started to surround myself. So what happened then? I started to discover more events and more people and more communities that started or that do think the way that I think. Is that a coincidence or is that because that was the way that I was thinking and by extension, that is who I was surrounding myself with or going to, and you can kind of see where this is going, it just snowballs into one event, maybe one more person, maybe one more experience that you feel better about and grew from as opposed to feeling suppressed and actually retracted from. So I kept on working on that and um, more and more people started to surround themselves or become part of my life. Um, And some of the um, 
the people that were not in that mindset actually started to leave my life and sad, happy, whatever it is. Um, some of those people had to go because they just were that anchor that continued to see maybe not so much consciously, but subconsciously affect the way that I was trying to grow the way that I was trying to build myself. Um, and it, all from a positive place, I believe. Um, and when I chose to let those people go, there was no looking back. And years go by and you think, hmm, maybe we should let those people back in. But your intuition now steps in and protects you and says, no, you don't need that. So move on. And you do. And you don't think about it. Because you are now in a place that is only looking for positive. You're in a place that is looking to help others to become more. Why would you bring in that negative, right? It becomes kind of a no-brainer. And I say that just because now it feels like that. And I know it didn't before and it doesn't a lot of the time. But for right now, it's kind of one of those things that if you're not around it and it's not in your society, in whatever society is just two people, right? So your house is a society on its own. Then how can it affect you and how can it affect the decisions around you? Well, it can't. Because if it's not there, then how it's not there, right? You can't get a sunburn if you're sitting inside, right? Like it's just it's one of those things. You can't become more affected by in negativity if you don't surround yourself with more negative people. And if you do surround yourself with more negative people, you by extension will probably become more negative. And this isn't even on a conscious level. We can sit here and say to ourselves, yeah, whatever. I know when they're negative and that doesn't affect me. I say bullshit. It affects you 100%. Your subconscious is a lot stronger than you think. Or maybe you think it's stronger than great because then you're on it. Um, Your subconscious really runs the show. Everything you do during the day, you might think you're making decisions, but your subconscious is making hundreds of decisions for every one decision that you have from, from everything, everywhere, all the, everywhere. Anyway, back to manifestation. So what I'm also saying is that when you build your, yourself and your inner, inner values and who you want to be, that's when the manifestation can start because unless you're grounded and unless you know who or what direction you truly want to be and you really, really believe it, you're not going to be able to just manifest because the manifestation won't know where it's coming from and for what purpose. You know, you if your manifestation is floating, let's just say floating around in your body and it's ready to work for you and you've flexed it a little bit and it's like, okay, you know what, now it's time to make this happen and then it looks for mm, but where am i come what angle am i coming at it from am i coming at it from a positive angle am i coming at it from a negative or a greedy or a selfish or a giving or um, an embracing or an empathetic where is that manifestation supposed to grow from and then it can become so i say you need to build who you are and have these values and have this way of life at least at the same time as you're starting to try to manifest because it truly does come from deep, 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 deep. And once again, once you have it, it's a lot easier to see it working and you're a lot, you're able to tie in a lot of things. Now, some people might say that synchronicity. Sure. Maybe. Can you manifest synchronicity? Why not? 
right? If you can't manifest, if you have the ability to, if you believe in manifestation, then you should essentially believe that you're able to manifest things that are like synchronicity, right? And for those of you that don't know what synchronicity is, um, synchronicity is things that happen maybe at like at like a weird time. So there's been some crazy synchronicity things that happen here. And some of them are like huge and some of them are not so huge. So here's an example. Um, on one of my radio shows, I had uh, Jesse, the holistic hippie. She was on and we talked about chakras. Now, I have had that episode probably for... I don't know, three months, and I just released it two weeks ago. So I released it on the Tuesday or Wednesday of the week. It's my only episode on chakras, and um, I released it, whatever, it was good. And on the Friday, I jumped on a bus to, from, to go from Austria here to Venice, Italy. The bus was rammed. I was with four people like four of my friends and there was only single seats. So we all kind of looked around and started just sitting wherever. And I had an option to sit beside some, I don't know, 25 year old dude or beside this like 50, 55 year old, let's, let's say 50 uh, year old lady. And I sat beside the lady. It just happened. So two minutes in, whatever bus starts going, I talk to her. I say, Hey, what are you up to? Blah, 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 blah. I'm a Canadian. I speak English. And she, you know, we started talking And I don't know, maybe five minutes in, I say, you know, what do you do in Vienna? She works in Vienna and she says, I work with energy and I work with chakras. I was like, whoa, what do you mean? And so she talked to me about her work. She works with chakras, with people, with families and with animals. She was amazing. She's amazing. Anyway, um, I I was like, wow. Like, and then she says to me, do you know what the chakras are? And I'm like, yeah, of course I do. And I showed her my video of uh, me and Jesse talking about chakras that I had just released a couple days sooner. And that opened up a huge discussion. And this is part of this manifestation about surrounding yourself with people. And it just happens. Huge conversation on this bus For over two and a half hours straight, I talked to this lady about everything and about so much about energy and what her work is all about and the soul, just so much awesome stuff that there was no way in my eyes that that was a fluke, that she was sitting there with an empty, like everything lined up for me to sit beside this lady and talk to her and we exchanged information we're emailing all the time now she's inviting me to this workshop in vienna to work in this energy system and to learn about it and um when i think about manifestation and manifesting the people that i want around me here was like an amazing example of me or it happening because um it's just i believe in it from this place all the time. Oh, Bernardium, I sing to you across a galaxy of which I'll never reach again. Oh, my alien love, I cannot breathe through the abysmal space between your tentacles and me. Don't feel you are the 
there you have it maybe the easiest show that i've had to do other than just trying to edit some things together um i wanted to use those two clips um i think the discussion with brennan and jordan in its entirety has so much um insight from these two guys that uh, i keep going back to it once in a while to listen to it over and again uh, as for the manifestation you know what give it a shot if you want maybe not i don't know it's one of these things it's kind of like a wave sometimes it's stronger sometimes it isn't there was <laughs> Benardium. hopefully you liked it if you want to see or listen to any more of her stuff that was from seven years ago uh she's at nerd city 411 on youtube other than that thank you so much thank you to uh Trent Radio for being able to do all this. Actually, thank you to Trent Abroad as well. A shout out to Kate Logan and that program and how to uh, go to school in other countries. They're amazing. She's amazing. Touch base with her if that's something you guys want to do. And other than that, hopefully uh, everything's tip top for next week and I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much. <laughs>